Yeah, this is section seven four. This is the last section that we're doing. Okay, we're doing percents. And I think you know a lot about the basics of percent, so I'm gonna focus on application problems. So percents is you take a number and divide by 100 and it gives you the percentage. So I'm wagering you know a lot of this stuff. Well, here's one. You move the decimal place twice. This is 0.04%. A little harder to see than this one, where you divide, divide, move the decimal place twice, and you get 3%. I guess I was thinking division because I saw this and I thought, oh, as a decimal, that's three hundredths. That's a definition of percent. That's 3%. Going the other way, you're starting with 5%, you're moving the decimal place two to the left to get 0 0.05. Again, if I look at this, that's five over 100, so it's 5%. 250%, I know it's bigger than one, I move my decimal place twice to the left. Why is there an ellipse? And I get 2.5. Okay, applications. These are typically the three types of problems. And they're normally written in a very strange way. So I'm just going to do story problems because I'm going to use something different. I'm going to use something called the percent bar. It's being used more and more in elementary education. It's a nice representation of the problem and it uses proportions to solve so it's easier to set up equations. Okay, so here's what I mean by percent bar. It's like a candy bar. Okay, I've got a hundred percent up here. That's what my house is. That's my 100%. I want to find the amount of the down payment, which is 20% of this. Well, nice thing about this is you may have a child go, oh, I'm going to put 20% here. And you can say, whoa, is that really like a fifth of the candy bar? And you can talk about partitioning to give them a better idea of fractions as well as percents. And so they go, okay, how about here? And you go, oh, much better. That's what I'm looking for. That's my X. So I always set up the proportion. So X is in the numerator. So I'm, I'm going X over 20 is 92,000 over 100. Notice because it's proportions, I did not have to change my percents to decimals. And the only arithmetic I have to do is multiply 20 over there. I'm going to let you do that. And I got X to be $18,400. That's my down payment. That seems to be about one fifth of that. So I think I'm okay. Okay, next one. Alberto has 45 correct answers on an 80 question test. What percent of his answers are correct? So my unknown is a percent. I set it up. Let's see, 80 questions is my 100%. He answered 45, which in this case is a little more than 50%. So I already know my answer is a little more than 50% just by my partition. There's my X. 
Again, x over 45 is equal to 100 over 80. Fifty six point two five percent, and I already knew it was a little over fifty percent. So that seems good. Okay, forty two percent of parents in the school district are employed, so I know how many the percentage. The number employed is one sixty eight. How many parents are in the school district? Okay, so I'm gonna reason it out here. And that's another thing, this helps me organize my thoughts. Okay, 42% of the students, are, of the parents are employed out of 100. See, the number employed is 168, oh, that's here. So X has to go there, there's only four things. So again, I've got it set up. I do X over 100 is equal to 168 over 42. You do the math on that, multiply by 100 and divide, you get 400. So 400 parents are in the school district. That seems about right, because if I double this and a little more, it's gonna be near 400. So the percent bar allows me to just reason through the problem, put my numbers in there, and I'll have to get three of them from the problem, and the fourth one is what I'm looking for. Okay, last one. This is a two-stepper. I have to start with what the price is now. And it was marked down 30% from a price. So I'm going to have to start with this. And this is going to look strange. So this is actually from the second markdown. My price now is 896. Now, why am I writing it? over here because I want to see what the price was before which is a hundred percent why didn't I put my 896 down here where 30 percent is because I want to do this in one step at least this part I don't want to have to subtract if I'm marked down 30 percent that means I have 70 percent of the value left and that's what the 896 is so let's see what the cost of the shirt was before this second markdown, which is X over 100, is 8.96 over 70. Notice dollars, dollars, percent, percent. So before it was marked down a second time, my shirt was $12.71. Now I'm gonna do it again, but and now it's only marked down 20%. So my bar is gonna look like this. I don't know what the original price was. I know it's 1271 now. I know this is 100%, but 20% off means I have 80% left. And that's what that is. One more proportion, X over 100. Equals 1271 over 80. Solve for X. The original cost of my shirt was $15.89. OK, 
Okay, I want you to look at something since I have this. Uh, I'll do it up here. Okay, so originally it was cost 1589. It underwent 20%, then 30% off, off that. And I ended up at eight something, right? 896. Notice that 896 is not half of 1589. It's not 50% of 1589. Why not? Pause and think about that for a second. Well, the short answer is these are not added. So addition isn't the thing. The 20% acted on that and gave us a new price here. The 30% acts on this new price. It does not act on the original price. And that's why we don't have quite a 50% markdown. In fact, if you take 896 divided by 1589, you get, Roughly 0.56, should be a decimal. And if we look at that, sorry, that means it was really 44% uh, markdown, not the 50%. This represents 56% of 1589. Oops, can't fit that in there, sorry. So again, these are not added because they're not acting on the same original value. That's section 7.4.